Hello there and welcome. My name is Mal and this is another guide in my Master of Orion series. If you're completely new to Master of Orion and think a Cylon looks like this, or even this, no worries, I've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and let's jump in. Alright folks, let's jump into this. Now the purpose of this guide is to give you the quickest way sort of into the game. So I'm going to show you how to set your game up. I'll make some simple suggestions on how to get started. If you want more in-depth explanations on uh, the different resources, the UI and things like that, I'm going to go ahead and link right about here uh, to another guide that's more in-depth. So if you watch this guide and you decide afterwards you need some more information, this will be part of uh, a series of guides, and there'll be a playlist in the description of this video. As a reminder, you can't click a link with an annotation if you're on a mobile device, but again, there'll be links in the description of the video. So let's get to this now. Uh, we're going to continue to use the Human Republic as sort of the go-to empire in these guides, and the reason I'm saying that is because if you're new to Master of Orion, they're a very flexible and I think somewhat easy uh, empire to use and to get into the game. I'll very briefly tell you why. Um, they have Diplomat as their starting trait, uh, which gives them um, the government the government technology right off the bat, and then plus five morale, which is very, very strong, and it scales well throughout the entire game. They have Charismatic, and they have Traitors, and what that gives you is increased disposition with um, the other AIs that you're playing against, so you're less likely to get called into a war that you don't want to be in. Um, you can get beneficial trade deals, uh, so it's and also two deals for technology and whatnot because you're getting a bonus to interface with those other empires and then traders which dovetails nicely in with charismatic gives you bonuses of 25% on any credits that you make through trade treaties. So one of the things that you're going to want to do with the humans is make contact with the other AIs as quickly as possible and establish as many agreements, particularly trade agreements in the early game and it'll give you a huge you know economic boost. Uh, which will allow you to propel into the mid game and should make things, you know, relatively easy for you the first time playing through. Uh, their only disadvantage is they've got a minus 20% to security, so you got to be a little bit mindful um, of where you put your uh, operatives, your spies, and you prim primarily want to put them on counterintelligence on your key worlds to make sure that you're not being uh, preyed upon by the other empires. Okay, so let's jump in. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on the game settings. Again, if you want a breakdown of every single one of these, I have that again in the aforementioned detailed basics guide. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to set up what I think is a very reasonable uh, starting game if this is your first time playing. So we're going to go with Circle Galaxy, which means you're going to have access to everywhere uh, in the known galaxy right off the bat. You won't be restricted in your travel. Um, medium is a good size. Uh, even when you get very experienced with the game, the advantage of playing on a medium map is you'll be able to make contact relatively soon. The length of the game um, will progress well regardless of what uh, settings you put in terms of speed. Uh, Galaxy Age, um, average, I think, again, is your best bet. Really default on all of these. Um, let's see, AI opponents 5, sure. And then for game pace, I think your first time through Classic makes the most sense. Now, in terms of Advanced, I would suggest right here where it says Pirates, that you turn that off. Pirates are still not balanced very well in the game, um, and they can create issues with the AI. And essentially what happens is, generally speaking, it ends up being in your favor um, because the Pirates can destroy an enemy AI. And, and, and to me, that that really unbalances the game. It's not as fun. So I would suggest turning it off. Of course, you can leave it on. Um, and then if you want to roll the dice a little bit, you can unclick balanced starting conditions to see if maybe you get a little bit of a better home system. My recommendation would be to just leave this on. And then all of these other settings, just leave them be. In terms of victory types now, you have um, a maximum score at the end of X number of turns, which you can set. And then you've got diplomatic, technological, and economic. Now. What I would suggest for your first game, because I'm a, this guide assumes that you're new to the game, is then you you turn some of these off. Um, you know, I think I think what makes sense here is to go with score. Uh, the other one linked to that is conquest, which if you destroy all of the other AIs, you can win that way. Um, and then I think turning off technological makes sense. 
Um, and turning off economic makes sense. Now you're playing as the humans, uh, and you can get the AIs to vote for you in the Galactic Council. So every once in a while, once all of the AIs have met each other and met you, this council will form and they'll sort of vote. Like, okay, you're going to be the Galactic Overlord of Greatness. I, I don't think that's the actual title, but you get my drift. Um, and since you're playing as the humans, there's a decent chance that you'll actually be able to get some of them to vote for you. So tech and economic, depending on who ends up going against you, um, there's an AI that could sort of run away from you and end up getting one of these victories um, very quickly. So I think, again, for your first match, this would be a great way to go. All right, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so here we are in our home system. And if you did not do, um, or excuse me, if you did do starting balance con uh, conditions, then what you're going to have is your home world, and then this will... Uh, you know, this will be a gas planet. We'll go ahead and identify that. Now, you can't do anything with this now, but later on we'll be able to. And we have a fleet of two scouts, a frigate, which is a combat vessel, and a colony ship. And what we're going to want to do right away is scout as much of the galaxy as quickly as we can. So we're going to grab this scout... And you can see that I am selecting them and then I'm right clicking to tell them where to go. And what will happen is as we travel through, we'll explore this area. We'll uncover additional destinations that we can go to. We're going to go ahead and send our colony ship this way as well. Since we have no other options, we might as well. And as you can see here, we've got six of 13 population. Our next population will come up in 19 turns. That's what this little number here indicates. This little emblem here tells us that we have a star base and that the star here tells us that this is our capital. All right, so let's go down to this is the uh, planet level. Excuse me. We're going to choose our first production and it, it varies slightly depending on uh, which empire you choose to play. But really, colony ship should almost always be your first your first one out of the gate. Okay, so we're going to select that and then we're going to we're going to shift some resources around. We're going to actually move. We've got research, food and production. You need food to maintain your planet and it also fuels how quickly you will grow. You've got research and we'll get into selecting that in just a moment. The number of research points you have will dictate how many turns to get whatever tech is you have research done. And then production obviously is how much you can produce per cycle. Um, and as you can see here, if I move off. 147 turns. That's not very good. We want to prioritize that. So we're going to not only keep those two, but we're going to grab a researcher as well. Now we've cut our next colony ship down to 19 turns. We're going to go over here to the Empire tab at the top. And we're going to move our tax rate from three to four. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because, especially with the humans that have a morale bonus, I don't have to worry about anyone going on strike until we've grown significantly. So the additional tax revenue is certainly worth it. So I suggest that you do this right away. And then you can always switch it back once you start to see people go on strike. Now, you can avoid them doing so by getting additional tech that helps your morale. Things like, um, as an example, government support centers or hollow simulators, things like that. All right. Now let's go to the research tab. Now, what you'll choose from this first line of text has a lot to do with who you chose as your starter and there's a couple of um, schools of thought here but playing as the humans you really have two choices you can go for automated factory which ultimately will speed up your production or you can go with hydroponic farms when you initially establish a new colony um, you're really not going to have any food so the one colonist that gets there is only going to be able to just sort of hang out and do farming and that's if the world actually permits it not all worlds do um, but I think the strongest pick for the humans out of the gate is to get automated factory. All right, what else do we need to do before we change to the next turn? I don't think anything. Nope. Let's go ahead and hit the next turn. All right, we'll tell this scout to go through. You can also click right here. Auto turn enabled. This will basically cycle turn after turn until something significant happens. All right, so what do we have here? Okay, let's talk about this a little bit. Biomes. There's three stats to know. 
You've got the size of the planet. You can see this is a two. The actual biome itself, this one's arid. And then you've got Ocean and Terran, which is the fourth. And then the fifth is Gaia World. And then Minerals, which is your baseline production, um, goes from one to five as well. Now, there's also ties to something called pollution. And over time, uh, worlds that have um, high biome levels and high minerals, which is going to fuel production, uh, will also make a planet uh, have to deal with higher levels of pollution. But I'll get into that in uh, sort of more advanced gameplay, probably in another guide. I just wanted to mention it to you. But this is a good starter planet for our first colony. Actually, it looks like we've got another arid world right here. Very nice. This one has gold, as you can see right here. So you get two extra credits per turn. So since these worlds are essentially equal, I'm going to take this colony ship and I'm going to grab this planet right here. You'll see I just click right here on this colonize. And there we go. Now, when we get to the new world, because we don't have any tech to improve um, our colony ships at this point, like I had mentioned before, we only have two food and we really can't move anyone off. Otherwise, we're going to lose this population. So we're going to have to leave this person right here and in 46 turns, which is a long time before we get our next growth. So what we will do is once we can afford it, uh, we will buy um, probably the currently being researched automated factory because we can queue up right here an item. Let me just show you this. And if we had the money, we could buy it. Like I could buy this government support center. But right now we don't have the tech. So we're just going to leave. We're just going to leave this planet alone for now and let it grow. Oh, and nice. There's an anomaly right here. So I can show you this mechanic. Wow, this is a really nice little system, actually. And we'll keep exploring. And we'll send someone over this way. 30 credits. Okay, that's nice. Sometimes you can get a technology from those. Sometimes you can get uh, a ship from those. It really varies greatly. Oh my. Okay, so this is an excellent planet. Huge size. It's a level four biome so that it'll increase its growth rate and it's mineral rich. Plus it has gold. Now the disadvantage is that it also is high gravity. So until you get gravity generators, unless you're playing uh, a race that has tolerance, this is going to give you a significant uh, hit to all the production on said planet. But long term, that would be a great planet to have. And <laughs> uh, transversely, we have a low gravity one right next to it. Interesting. Okay, so here's what we've managed to do just in a couple of minutes. We've gone through the first, you know, 10 or 11 turns here. We've established our first new colony. We are uh, eight turns away from having our second colony ship ready, which we can go to any of these nice worlds that are near us and colonize them. Uh, we haven't encountered another alien race yet, but once we do as the humans, it's always a good idea, again, to immediately go for some kind of trade agreement. So once we have made contact, then we will as quickly as possible try to get said agreements. Now, again, this is a guide that's part of a series of guides. And if you're interested in more specific videos like how to handle combat or explanation of how pollution works, things like that, I'll have separate small guides available at some point in that playlist. By all means, I, uh, I welcome your questions. If you have any questions about Mass of Orion, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I am Mal and I'll see you later.